The house on Arboretum Road had seen 120 Christmases since its completion. The current occupiers of the house on Arboretum Road traditionally put up their lights on December 21st each year. That could only mean one thing. It was four more sleeps till Christmas. I hadn't seen that. That's really cute. <laughs> Hi, welcome back and welcome to another Vlogmas video. I'm Fran, this is Fran Nook in the Pages and today I'm going to talk about a book that I read and finished very recently, just a few days ago actually, and that I absolutely adored and that is Stay Another Day by Juno Dawson. This book came out this year in October and it is about three siblings spending the Christmas holidays together in their family home back in Edinburgh. We have two twins, Fern and Rowan, who are at college now in London and Bristol respectively. And Willow is 17, I think, so she still lives at home with the parents. These siblings have some very juicy secrets that are going to come to light during these few days spent together. So prepare yourselves to go on a fantastic, humorous, dark journey filled with drama. <laughs> I have a hard time saying that this book is YA because it doesn't really feel like YA, it just feels like a contemporary fiction book that is wonderfully, beautifully, effortlessly queer. I know some readers are very sensitive when it comes to content warning, trigger warnings, type of language and all of that. Personally, I've never cared about it that much. Before joining booktube, I would never pay attention to the kind of language, to the age target, none of that. If I was interested in a book, I would pick it up at the bookstore and read it and that was that. I've never been traumatized by anything, but I know that that's not the same for everyone. So just so you know, there is swearing in this book. There are sex scenes that are not the focus as they would be in a romance book, but they're there. There are conversations about sex and sex related topics. The language, even when there's no swearing, is still very mature. Trigger warnings for homophobia, transphobia, eating disorders, suicidal thoughts, and there's also probably something else that is not coming to mind right now, but as you can see, this is a very drama and trauma heavy book. So if you're not into that or if you think that some of these things that I've mentioned might trigger you, maybe I would stay clear of this book. If not, just pick it up right now because this was fucking amazing. <laughs> Fern and Rowan are the twin siblings. Fern is your typical, stereotypical, perfect daughter who really loves Christmas, is crazy about Christmas and she wants everything to be perfect and be in control of everything. And she is taking her boyfriend, Tom, home for the Christmas holidays. Rowan is the opposite, maybe. He is starting to be an actor. He is so gay and he likes to sleep around, flirt with people, enjoy his life, drink and have fun and he doesn't do commitments of any kind and he's bringing home his friend Sid who is non-binary and who is going to strike a very unlikely and unexpected friendship during the Christmas holidays. And then there's Willow, she is the younger sister, she lives at home with the parents and she has anorexia. She's been suffering from eating disorders for two or three years, I think. And she talks about this demon that comes out, these thoughts that crawl in her mind and then won't let her go. And suffering from anorexia, she's really dreading the Christmas holidays because she knows that there will be food that she will be forced to eat and all the attention will be on her because everyone in the family knows that she has this problem. So as you can see, there are all the ingredients for a Christmas holiday just filled to the brim with drama and potential fights among the siblings and secrets and other twists and turns that are going to be revealed and it was just perfection. To me, this was perfection. This is the quintessential 2021 queer YA novel where the author is not afraid to go there, she's not afraid to have certain more mature um, conversations, she's not afraid of treating her readers like uh, adults. I just loved how she was able to plant here and there conversations about being gay, about 
being non-binary, about religion, about politics, about capitalism, a little bit of everything, but it didn't feel like it was forced, like she was trying to push an agenda on the reader, specifically because all the characters in this one make mistakes, all the characters in this one are morally grey, there's no right way to do things, she just has it all out, you know, she just talks about everything. The book doesn't try to tell you what's right and what's wrong, it's just a bunch of characters living their lives, doing their shitty things and having to deal with the consequences and just, you know, gosh, it's so full of drama, but in such a fantastic way. I listened to the audiobook of this one and I absolutely adored it because it is set in Edinburgh in Scotland and both narrators had Scottish accent that were just a joy, a bliss to listen to. The narrators were Danny Holmes and Kerry Thomason, if I'm not mistaken, and they just nailed it. They were perfect. And this is one of the very few times where the moment I finish the book, I honestly just wish to go back to the beginning and reread it or re-listen to the whole thing. That's what I wanted to do. I stopped myself because I have other reads planned, but I really, really wanted to do it. It was hard not to do it and I'm definitely going to reread it again next year when Christmas rolls around because this was just absolutely perfect for me. This is what I needed, this is what I wanted and it blew my mind, it was incredible, it was perfect and I loved it. Everything about this book is perfect. Another random thing that I really, really loved about this book were the chapters narrated from the perspective of the house, of the family house in Edinburgh. They just brought that, I don't know, like that je ne sais quoi that made a difference somehow. Maybe if they hadn't been there, I wouldn't have been able to say, oh, there's something missing. But them being there made the difference. Does it make sense? This book was just absolute perfection to me. I loved everything about it. I loved the characters. I loved that the family name was McAllister. <laughs> I loved the family dynamics between the children and the parents. I loved the effortless queerness of it. I loved the unexpected, weird, happy ending that brought so much Christmas joy to my heart. I loved all the twists, I loved all the drama, I loved the themes, the conversations, I loved the tone, the dark humor, everything. I loved the audiobook, I loved the setting in Scotland, it was just... it was just perfection and I loved it so much and you still have some time. You need to go and get yourself this book and spend your Christmas with this book and you won't regret it. Actually, you will come back here and you will thank me. Let's just wait and see. You go and get this book and come back and tell me. Mm -hmm. And this was it for this video. I hope you enjoyed watching it. Please let me know if you have read this book. If you have read any other book by Juno Dawson, let me know in the comments because this is the first book of hers that I read. I haven't read her other books. There are many. I don't know where to go from here. So if you would like to help me, please do and let me know in the comments. And this is it. Thank you so much for watching this video. I will see you tomorrow with another Vlogmas video, but until then, have a good one, take care and keep reading. Warm hugs. Bye.